nine sevens homework last section in chapter nine problem twelve two marbles are selected without replacement from a bag containing two red two blue and two and one yellow marble the color of each marble is recorded and we want to determine the sample space for each so what are our options so on this we could grab a red marble and then we could grab a red marble we could grab a red and then we could grab a blue we could grab a red and then we could grab a yellow. What could we do if we grabbed a blue first? We could grab a blue and then a red. We could grab a blue and then a blue. And we could grab a blue and then a yellow. And then finally, what do we do if we grab a yellow first? Well, we could grab a red. We could grab a blue, but not another yellow because there are only one yellow marble in this box. So those are your eight options here. Okay. All right, moving on. 18, now find the probability for the experiment, the probability of getting a tail on the last toss. All right, well, it gives us the sample space. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. And how many of those have a tail on the last toss? Here's one, here's one, here's one, and here's one. So that's four out of eight, or one half, which is the same as saying 50% probability of getting a tail on the last toss. 24, find the probability for the experiment selecting one card from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. The card is nine or lower, and that includes the aces. Well, if we just think about one suit, there are 13 cards in a suit. And if we say 9 or lower, our probability is 9 out of 13. If we were looking at the whole deck, it would be 36 out of 52. But just look at each suit. Each suit has 13 cards. How about problem 30? Find the probability for the experiment of tossing a six-sided die twice. All right, so we've got all the options for a six-sided die. All right, the sum is either odd or prime. Well, we know the sums are in between 2 and 12. And so here, how many of these are odd or prime? 2 is prime, and then if you're prime, you're, you have to be odd to be prime, so we'll get the rest of them. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six of the 11 options. Okay, and so we want to add up these options here. Okay, so what's the probability that we roll a two? So that's one out of 36. This is two out of 36. All the way up. out of 36, and then we start counting back down. 5 out of 36, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So let's add up the circle terms here. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 out of 36 total options. We add those up, we've got 12, 16, and 17. Did I add that right? 2, 4, 6, 12, 18, 19. 19 over 36 would be our final answer. 36. We are told that the probability of something happening is 36%. The probability that it won't happen is the complement 1 minus 0.36. And so if you do that math, you end up with 0.64, or a 64% chance that it will not happen. 42, you are given the probability of the event will not happen. Find the probability of the event will happen. So on this one, we're going the other way. 1 minus 61 over 100, which is 39 out of 100. For our final answer on 40. Two. Uh, all right, let's look at 48. 100 college students were interviewed to 
find out their political affiliations and whether they favored a balanced budget amendment. The results are listed below. D is Democrats, R is Republican. All right. A person is selected at random from the sample. Find the probability that the described person is selected. A person who doesn't favor the amendment. So on this one, there were 34 people who did not favor the amendment. So we're just looking at the not favor category and we're looking for the total. So 34 out of the 100 people selected, which is uh, reducible, we can drop that down, and so our final answer, 17 over 50, is what we would get. We can also write this as a decimal, as 0.34, which is 34%. Alright, what's the probability they're a Republican? Then we're going to look at the total for the Republican, that's 45 out of 100, which is 0.45, or 45% chance. And how about a Democrat who favors the amendment? Well, that's just here. There are 23 Democrats who favor it, so 23 out of 100, which is 0.23 or 23%. Problem 54. Five paychecks and envelopes are addressed to five different people. The paychecks are randomly inserted into the envelopes. What are the probabilities that exactly one paycheck will be inserted in the correct envelope? And at least one paycheck will be inserted into the correct envelope. All right, the way we're going to look at this is that we've got these five envelopes. We've got to think about the slots. And what happens if we put a correct and an incorrect paycheck into each of them? All right, so there's couple different ways to look at it. And the way I want to look at it is figuring out the possibilities that we get all five correct and then four these are correct. And then three and then two and then one and then finally none correct. So let's start with five. To get all five of these correct, right, when we put the first envelope in with the first paycheck, we're going to go five Right? There's, it's in the correct spot. The next one's also in the correct spot. How many different ways are there for all the envelopes to match up with exactly the right paychecks? There's only one way. Right? There's one correct answer where all five paychecks match up with all the right uh, envelopes. Let's think about how we can get four correct envelopes and one wrong. There's actually no way to do that. Because if you have four correct envelopes, the last one's also got to be correct. Right? You can't have four correct and then the last one being, being wrong because there's only one left over. So there's one way to have them all correct and you can't have just one of them wrong because it's got to be either three or five. So let's think about three. Three, we want to get three correct, which means we're going to do this. Out of the five envelopes, we're going to go, do this with a little more space, five envelopes, three of them are going to be in the right spot. Okay, so three correct times, then how many wrong, right? Then two wrong. We'll deal with the wrong in a second. 5C3 turns out to be 10, all right? If we have three of them correct, all right, how many ways are there for the next two to be wrong, right? So in this situation, there's only one way for that to happen because Otherwise, we have all five correct, so they're just switched. The last two positions are switched. So it's going to be 10 times 1, or just 10. All right? So let's think about how many ways to get two of these right. It's going to be 5C2, which turns out to also be 10. Now, how many different ways can we get the last three and have two of them be wrong? All right, so on this one, we could say from those three, Two of those are going to be wrong, right? And so another way of thinking about it is just either those two are wrong, we've switched them, this should be, let's call this three, four, and five. So we have 
four on that one, five on this one, and three on this one. Or we put five on there, which means that this one has to be three and this one has to be four. It's the only two options that we've got. So there's two ways to do that wrong. And then how many ways can we just get one right? Just one of them is going to be wrong. Well, let's think about this. The first one, we've got five envelopes that we can put the right one into, match up that one. After that, how many ways can we put the wrong one into the second envelope? There's three envelopes, or there's three paychecks that would be wrong. All right, so we got that one wrong. At this point, we have three left, okay? And then, remember, we figured out that there's three different ways to screw this up on the back end. So 5 times 3 times 3 is 45. And so lastly, we want to figure out how many ways to do 0. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, how many ways are there total? And remember, total options would be 5 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 120. So far, we've gotten ourselves 80 different possible ways. So if there's 120 total, we've used up 80, there must be 40 left over. All right, so knowing that exactly one paycheck will be inserted in the correct envelope, that's this one here. We're going to say 45 out of 120. Divide those and get the decimal, and you're going to get... Point three seven five, thirty seven and a half percent for A. And then for B, at least one paycheck will be inserted in the correct envelope. Well, there's 80 ways to get at least one. So 80 out of 120, which is two thirds. So it's going to be 66 percent, two thirds of a chance to get at least one. Okay. All right, 60, ATM personal identification number, PIN codes, typically consist of four-digit sequences. Find the probability that if you forget your PIN, you can guess the correct sequence at random, or if you recall the first two digits. All right, so what's your chance of guessing the first number? Oh, you got a one out of 10 chance. What's the chance of guessing the second number? Oh, you got a one out of 10 chance. Third number, one out of 10 chance. Fourth number. 1 out of 10 chance. So if you don't remember your PIN number, you have a 1 out of 4 zeros, 10,000 chance of guessing that right. Okay, And if you know the first two, then you only have to guess the last two, which is going to be a 1 out of 100 chance. So your odds get a whole lot better if you can remember the first two. And let's finish this up. Backup vehicle Fire company keeps two rescue vehicles because of the demand on the vehicles and the chance of mechanical failure. The probability that a specific vehicle is available when needed is 90%. Okay, so availability, we're going to pin at 90%. The availability of one vehicle is independent of the availability of the other. Find the probabilities that both vehicles are available. All right, so the first vehicle has a 90% chance of being available. The second one also has a 90% chance, so we're going to multiply those together, get 0.81, and have an 81% chance that we can get both of them available. Okay, so this is both. And that was problem A. B, neither of them is available. Okay, so for neither of them being available, there's a 10% chance. The first one's not available. There's a 10% chance the second one's not available. So if we multiply those two things together, we get a 1% chance that neither of them are available. All right, so finally, what is the chance that at least one of them is going to be available? Well, we've already seen here. Let's see, at least one. So we want 
probability of 1. Okay, on that one. Sorry, I'm reading this wrong. At least one of them means that not this. Not both unavailable. The opposite of that, right? So that's 1 minus 0 0.01, which gives us a 99% chance that at least one of them would be available. Okay? All right. That will do it for probability. We will see you next class.